Quebec Human Rights and Freedoms. Article 1. Every human being has a right to life and to personal security, inviolability, and freedom. So, every human being has a right to this. Black Laws Dictionary. Inviolability. The quality or fact of being safe from violation, inviolable, safe from violation, incapable of being violated. Black laws, free, point two, not subject to the constraint or domination of another, enjoying personal freedom, emancipated, characterized by choice rather than by compulsion or constraint free will unburdened not confined by force or restraint unrestricted and unregulated article 1 of Quebec's Charter of Human Rights and Freedom states this every human has a right okay so we're gonna stop there it doesn't say every human being has or every human is obligated it says every human has a right so there is something you can claim there's a right that you can claim as a human and those rights are inviolability freedom and life so these are rights that you are allowed to claim that you can say these are my rights I'm acting on these rights every human being every human being Every person, every person, every person, every person, a person. In article 4, 5, and 6, and many others, it starts off, it says, every person has the right. Now it's every person has the right. Now it's not every person has an obligation, but every person has a right. So there's two subjects again, a human and a person. So in the Charter of Human Rights and Freedom in Quebec, Article 3, it states that every person possesses fundamental freedoms. And then in the Quebec Civil Code, Article 1, it says that a human being possesses a juridical personality. Now they both use the word possesses, and they do this on purpose. Because to possess something does not necessarily mean that you are using it. For you can go in your house today and a lot of you possess different things. But a lot of these things are just sitting in the closet, right? You're not using them on a daily basis. For example, someone who hunts, they may have guns, and they may use their guns to hunt. Well, they possess guns, but they're not using those guns on a daily basis. Someone who likes to fish, for example, may have fishing rods that are sitting in the closet or in the storage room. They possess fishing rods, but they don't use those fishing rods every day. So in the same way, these codes are trying to express that you, have, you possess certain freedoms. Your legal person does, and, the juridic and you possess a juridical person. But to possess something doesn't mean that you're operating from it, or that you're using it at the time of possession. Now when you talk about a person's fundamental freedom, that they possess fundamental freedoms, it's just a, f a way, a terminology of, of saying that the government has taken away your rights as a human being. Whenever you hear that a person possesses fundamental freedoms, it should automatically click that says, oh, that's the way they've scammed us, that's the way they've removed our human rights and our inviolability, and they placed us into a different category, into a different designation, and they stripped us of our rights. See, because a human being, they have natural rights attached to them. But a legal person doesn't. They have only fundamental freedoms that's given to them by the government. Impartial hearing before independent tribunal. Every person has a right to a full and equal public and fair hearing by an independent and impartial tribunal for the determination of his rights and obligations or of the merits of any charge brought against him. Article 49. Any unlawful interference with any right or freedom recognized by this charter entitles the victim to obtain the secession of such interference and compensation for the moral and material prejudice resulting therefrom. So Article 47 states this, 
any unlawful, now notice they use that word, unlawful, because it is truly unlawful what they've done to us, but any unlawful interference with any right or freedom recognized by this charter entitles victim to the sensation of that interference. Now notice that this article doesn't refer to a person. It doesn't say any person whose fundamental rights are taken away. And it also doesn't say any human being whose fundamental rights have been stripped from them who, ha or who have a trouble. It just says any unlawful interference with any right or freedom recognized in the Charter, then you are allowed to go and ask for relief from this interference that they're doing upon you. The Charter shall not be so interpreted as to suppress or limit the enjoyment or exercise of any human right or freedom not enumerated herein. Article 50 states that any human right or freedom that's not mentioned in the Charter itself, then it still applies. So if you have any right or freedom that a man or a human being has that is attached to him because of who he is in a natural essence, if you don't have it expressed in this Charter, then you can call on this article, this Article 50, and go back to Article 47 and demand that you have uh, a cessation of what's interfering with your right. Article 74 now goes back to the other subject, the person. It says, any person who is a victim of a violation of rights, and they tell you what you can do, approach the commission de droit de la personne and such and such and such. But that's not what we're seeking. Here we're seeking to use the, the possibility for the human being. Complaints. Article 74. Any person who believes he has been the victim of a violation of rights that is within the sphere of investigation of the Commission may file a complaint with the Commission if several persons believe they have suffered a violation of their rights in similar circumstances they may form a group to file a complaint you, you're not going to be able to go to the Commission de la droit de la personne and try to invoke your human rights that are attached to your human being the Commission de la Droit de la Personne is strictly for your legal person. If your legal person has su suffered a fundamental breach of its rights, then you can go there. However, if you're going to try and invoke the law and the justice system on your behalf to fight that your human rights be respected, you have to go to court on your own. You have to do this on your own. You have to put forth your own effort. Quebec Interpretation Act. Person. The word person includes natural or legal persons their heirs or legal representatives, unless inconsistent with the statute or with special circumstances of the case. Black Laws Person, a human being, also termed natural person. Black Laws, legal person, see artificial person. Artificial person, an entity such as a corporation, created by law and given certain legal rights and duties of a human being, a being real or imaginary who for the purpose of legal reasoning is treated more or less as a human being. Interpretation Act of Quebec, Article 51. Whenever it is provided that a thing shall be done or must be done, the obligation is imperative, means you have to do it. But if it's provided that a thing may be done, it's Accomplishment is permissive, so it takes an, a, a permission to accomplish a may. Code of Civil Procedure Any person, Article 453, any person who has an interest in having determined for the resolution of a genuine problem either his or her status or any right, power, or obligation the person may have under a contract, a will, or any other written instrument, a statute, an order in council, or a bylaw, or resolution of a municipality, may, by way of motion to institute proceedings, ask for a declaratory judgment in that regard. Civil Code of Procedure. So we jump into Article 453 and it says, any person now in this code, the word person has not been redefined, so therefore it refers to a natural or a legal person. As you saw, Black Laws describes a natural person as a human being. So if a human being is having trouble, 
it can invoke this article 453, 453 under its natural person title. Now, the trouble that you're having with is concerning your status, your rights, your obligations under a contract, or a statute, a regulation, a bylaw, or a municipal resolution. So, it's pretty clear here that it's up to you to invoke the, the law and invoke the article here and bring it before the courts to have your status recognized as a human being, therefore freeing yourself from the obligations of the legal person. As you've seen, as you've seen in the Interpretation Act of Quebec, may is indicative of permission. It's a permissive expression. So it takes consent. So if you're going to bring a declaratory judgment concerning your status and your rights before a judge, he's going to have to consent. Now, he's going to be looking for a way out, obviously. He doesn't want to get involved in all this. So you've got to make sure he's going to be looking for a way out not to give you permission to bring this case before him. So you've got to make sure that you build your case really, really good and use all the evidence that it cannot be rebutted and don't give him any space to move. General Rules as to Judgment, Article 462, Code of Civil Procedure. No action will be dismissed merely because it is intended to obtain a declaratory judgment. But the court may, again the word may, if it is of opinion that the interest of the plaintiff is insufficient or that a judgment will not put an end to the uncertainty or controversy which gave rise to the action, refuse to render judgment. Article 462 uh, of the Civil Procedure says that the judge who you ask concerning your rights, that he can refuse to render judgment. He can refuse if he doesn't think that his judgment will put a stop to the controversy. What we're seeking, most of the time his judgment will put a stop to the controversy. However, you have to make sure you build your case solidly, very solidly before you go before the courts to try and invoke your rights as a human being.